questions for reflection. In our first reading, we learned that Yahweh provided a very visible sign of His presence among His people. The people of Israel watched and followed the signs from the cloud. When the cloud moved, they moved. And when it was stationary, they waited. God directed their movements. The Ark of the Covenant was a sacred symbol to the people of Israel. In the New Testament letter to the Hebrews, we read what was contained within the Ark. Quote, it contained a golden urn holding the manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, end quote. Notice how God is present to his people. He leads them through his servant Moses, and the people wait for the direction of the Lord. From the earliest centuries of the church, the fathers referred to Mary, the mother of Jesus, as the Ark of the New Covenant. She bore within her womb the true God and true man, Jesus the Christ, our Savior. So too, many tabernacles within which is reserved the most blessed sacrament, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, are designed like the Ark of the Covenant. This shows the continuity of God's presence with His new people, the Church, the body of Christ. But this presence is even more wonderful, for all who are baptized can encounter the Lord and commune with Him. Do we wait for the Lord to direct our lives? Do we recognize His presence among us? Sometimes we are impatient and we wish to move in one direction or another at a pace of our own choosing. Reflect upon this question. Are we allowing God to choose the time and direction of our moves? If not, what change should we make? In our responsorial psalm, we hear from David that as God provides a home for the birds, He also provides places of sanctuary for us. If we dwell with God, we will be filled with praise and strength, and our lives will be filled with blessings too. No, we're not promised an easy life as we follow God's will, but we can rest assured that our life will be easier if we walk with God than without Him. Can we think of any examples in our lives where walking with God or without Him has made our lives easier or more difficult? What is one change you can make to walk more closely with God? In today's Gospel, we learn that all will be judged at the end of time. The righteous will be spared, but the evil will be cast into a blazing furnace. Our reflection is simple. Does this thought frighten us, as terrible as it sounds? Or does it call us to an ever-deepening conversion? Do we understand that all men and women who are baptized into Jesus Christ, no matter what their state in life, are called to holiness? Do we really believe that we will be judged? Let us all consider receiving the Sacrament of Reconciliation this week.